our new families, so we welcome them. They did a wonderful job on their forgive sign. Oh, this is uh, the Coons. Uh, notice that they put it up where, uh, where the kids do their um, studying when they're in virtual school. Uh, I think Ben thought that it would be a good idea to have the forgive sign there because that can sometimes be a, a place of tension um, for, for all of us that uh, do homeschooling. We can probably relate to that. Oh, and there's the Liga family and the Vanden Bushes and the Mianekis. Oh, who's that? The Omen family. So, and then we have the, um, the rat rays there and somebody's refrigerator. I think that might be Terry Ledford's uh, refrigerator. The Van and Hootens. Um, I think this is the Petrix Butteris family. And there we have. Um, Who are hmm. the weird people? Hmm. The, the bachelor yeah. family. Oh. Bachelor kids. And the Getzies. And Ariana Washington showing off uh, their artwork. And the Waylands. And the Wicklatches. Oh, and there's a scene from our middle school get together at Zesty's, a small but mighty group, um, enjoying some some custard and uh, theology. And oh, there's someone displaying uh, a positivity mask, one of the uh, one of the projects that the middle schoolers did. Oh, so. What we're going to do now is, um, if, you, if you have it handy, um, don't worry if you don't have it, um, if you can grab your forgive sign, and we're going to teleport you to a random breakout room. And we're going to give you a couple minutes there. You'll be there with four or five other families. Uh, introduce yourselves and talk a little bit, uh, if you can share where you kept your forgive sign since our last time. If you were with us last time, if you weren't here last time, don't worry about it. Um, just introduce yourselves and um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, where you kept the sign and how you used it in the last couple weeks. So I'm gonna stop the share there so that I can uh, get us into breakout rooms. We have 24 participants right now. So we're gonna go into, oh, let's see. All right, we'll see you back in about four minutes. Have fun introducing yourselves to people and uh, sharing Hi. about your gift signs. Hi. Well, hello there. Oh, hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello my sister. Hello. Hi. Hi, we're still eating dinner. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's a late dinner. No problem. Glad you're here. So who is excited to start? We'll break bread with you. <laughs> we can start. Okay. So we're the Sutter family. So I'm Amanda and Cameron. And Addie. Hi, Addie. And my husband is putting soup away. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have so, your sign close by or no? Do what? They asked us oh. if we had our, our sign. Oh, I know. It's in the thing. We, we haven't even sent the picture yet. We've been really bad. That's quite and all right. little thing over there. Oh, I think we're going to. I'll let someone else go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for introducing. So we're Jamie and Sue Whalen. Um, I recognize a lot of faces here. Um, we put our sign up in the dining area, um, just for a reminder. We're, we're much smaller than we used to be. It's just the two of us and our dog. So the forgiveness happens among us and our pet, I guess. 
Well, I had someone to forgive at my workplace, and I work for the church. So you might think that everyone is nice and wonderful and Christian. That's not always the case. But in this case, it was me who had to learn to forgive. So every time I passed that sign, I would kind of touch it and go, okay, what's God calling me to do here? So that was my little challenge over the last two weeks. It's a continual thing for all of us. All right, who else would like to introduce? Claire, go ahead. Huh? Um, I'm Claire. This is Dad. <laughs> Hi. And we have our cat who doesn't want to be so. <clears throat> oh no. Cat. And we kept our sign in the dining in our dining room. Same thing. Awesome. Good to see you back, Claire. Oh, All right. Who's next? The oh. bachelor family. Okay. Hi, I am Meg Bachelor. This is my husband, Justin. You can introduce yourself. I'm Grace. I'm Philip. Hi. Um, and where did we keep our sign? Can you show your our sign? Hmm? Upside down. down. Upside down. There. We have our little prayer area on the um, top of our piano. Oh, here they come. Yeah, we needed it far longer. That was not, we did yeah. not. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I talked way good. too long again, see? Uh, yeah, we missed out on one of ours. Our uh, <laughs> they, you'll have to talk faster next time. Hey. <laughs> So, welcome back, and um, what we are going to do now is move into our reading that we're going to focus on um, for, um, for our generations tonight. Uh, it's interesting that tonight, um, or today, is the memorial for St. Jerome, um, and St. Jerome uh, did a lot of work with scripture. Um, he was a very famous uh, person who did a lot of work with translating the scriptures from the original languages. Um, and he also did a lot of work with putting together commentaries and all kinds of study guides for scripture. So um, it's, it's neat that um, our generations is meeting on his feast day a day that we're focusing on scripture too. Um, so our generations tonight will focus on um, really the second reading of the, um, the mass readings that we had last weekend, um, because that's the reading that um, Father Bob chose to build his homily around. So that's the reading that we're going to focus on. I invited uh, Wayne and Jolene, one of our participants, um, to proclaim the reading for us. And I'll have it up on the screen um, as well. Um, but you can always find the readings in your At Home with the Word book. Okay. Um, if you can't um, come up with your At Home with the Word book, know that in your um, original um, folder that you received, that, that you have copies of the readings in there. So you can grab it out of there too if you want to have, a, have one to, to look at. Okay, so we're going to listen to a reading from I can't hear um, St. Paul to the Philippians. So if you're not one of the speakers, if you could mute your microphone, please, um, and we'll listen to the reading. All right, a reading from the Paul's letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. Each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. So now we're going to take some time with our families and talk a little bit about the reading. Okay, so um, as you listened, as you read along, um, what words, ideas, or images caught your attention or imagination in the reading from the Philippians? Okay, so what words, ideas, or images caught your um, attention or imagination? And we'll just take about uh, four or five minutes um, to talk about it, and then, then we'll come back in the main group. Um, but this is family discussion time. Um, about who we are called to be as followers of Jesus. Uh, now we're going to listen to what Father Bob had to say about it um, in his homilies this past weekend. Um, so bear with me while I get that going. And uh, after his presentation of the, of the homily, um, we'll, we'll talk about what he has to, to say for a couple of minutes. Again, thanks for being here, and thanks for those of you joining us online. Oh, I showed you this etching from Fritz Eitenberg, Christ in the Breadlines. It was an opportunity to again remind ourselves that Christ is in many places, especially places where people need help. He's there. This week, I turn to Fritz Eitenberg again. This one is of a, it looks like a young person washing the feet of an, a senior citizen. And there's a halo around the person doing the washing of the feet. Kind of reminding us that it's a holy moment when we humbly do that and help somebody out. St. Paul in our second reading that Sarah read reminds us of the humility of the Lord. And Jesus is showing us the loving service of God to all of us. The washing the feet of the apostles at the Last Supper, humbly dying for everyone on the cross. So what I'd like to do today is share with you three examples of washing the feet, so to speak. Holy moments, God sightings, where people embrace the moment rather than running away from it. Examples of, again, where the kingdom of God is very present. And as I share these stories, which are from Deacon J. Cormier's writings, I think you may recognize yourself in some of the stories, or at least recognize other people that you have experienced in the story. The first story, it's been a long day. She sits at home in her living room, dimly lit at 11 o'clock at night. Her day started at six in the morning. Went to the office, going from one place to one place, gets a phone call from her school. Her eight-year-old son has a fever. She's raising the son by herself. So she goes to the school, gets her son, on the way calls her mom, see if mom could take care of watching her son while she goes back to work. At night now, she's paid the bills, monthly bills, just made it. It's tough times being a single parent and paying the bills, but she made it. She's tired, but she can't sleep. So she takes some time for prayer, thanking God for the beautiful boy snoring in the next room. 
who makes her life worthwhile. It's wonderful to be a mom. Second story. He drives truck for a package delivery service, and these days he is busy. He takes extra shifts once in a while because his family could use the money. His son Jack is looking at colleges for next year. Each week he gets home after a shift, long shift, gulps down some supper, heads to the community center to coach basketball for nine and 10 year old boys. That's where he started when Jack was nine years old. Now, Jack is not there anymore playing that basketball. He's older now. He certainly could give it up. Life would be a lot easier for him. But he knows these nine and 10 year olds and the families they're from pretty tough. He knows those nine and 10 year olds see this basketball game as one of the top highlights of their life. And so he keeps coaching, going there every week to coach them, to push them, to help them for the good of their soul and his. Third example, he helps her with her coat, makes sure she has a good steady hand on her cane. He then puts her arm into his and they walk the same path right outside in the afternoon in the park, right by their apartment. He points to a cardinal flying by, cheers a young boy who catches a football in the park, talks about the son that called last night, and the grandchildren, what they're doing, but none of it registers in her mind. She has the fog of dementia. All she recognizes is her husband walking with her, her husband of 63 years. And that's more than enough. He's thankful that they can walk arm in arm together for another day. Three examples of the kingdom of God. We heard the words from St. Paul today, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Participation in the spirit keeps us creating these holy moments with God's help, being of the same mind and the same love. And Sophia, today you get help through receiving communion, receiving Jesus right inside of you to create holy moments with his help. All of us have that opportunity to appreciate again, the beautiful story that we are a part of. And I hope that we can recognize the kingdom of God and the loving service that is done for us, for the ones we participate in as well, and appreciate the grace of God in those moments. Those are God's sightings. Those are holy moments. Those are God's revelation. Thanks for listening. So Father Bob shared with us three stories, um, three powerful stories. Um, one story, um, about a single mom with a sick child. Another about a delivery driver um, who gave his time volunteering as a coach. Another as an elderly couple as, as they age and uh, care for each other, um, even in their declining health. Um, three stories that, that talk about holy moments, God's presence with us. Uh, where, where are we seeing um, God breaking into our lives? A question for us to discuss um, is what's a holy moment story um, of loving service or God's presence that you've experienced? Okay, we heard the three stories Father Bob shared. What's a story about God's presence um, when you've experienced God's presence through doing something, um, so loving service, or something that you've experienced um, that, that you could share 
uh, with your family or somebody else. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes to talk as a family and to see what kind of examples of stories you can come up with, um, like the stories that Father Bob told about God's loving presence in your life. When we stop to think about it, uh, we can come up with all kinds of stories about how God breaks into our lives. And it's important that we name those, that we call those out as holy moments. The times that God's love and God's presence breaks into our lives, it reminds us that God is always present to us. Sometimes we're used as God's instruments to bring love to one another, to be foot washers, as Father Bob talked about. Sometimes we're, get, we're caught up in an overwhelming awareness that we're in the kingdom of God. All of those are revelations of the inbreaking of the kingdom of God in our midst, something we call revelation. Sometimes they're as simple as sharing a conversation with your grandma or making lunch for somebody who needs it, maybe a homeless person or a lonely, someone who's lonely. Or it could be as simple as being overwhelmed and awestruck uh, by the boisterous honking and whistling wings of a flock of fall geese as they fly low overhead. As happened to me um, this, this past week, I think I'm on the flight line for, uh, for Canadian geese and they come right over my house sometimes and make such a ruckus um, and a whole big bunch of them. And you just stand there and you watch and you think, wow, you know, isn't that wonderful? You know, such a, a cool sign of God's presence. Now to help us name and keep in front of us those wonderful revelations of God, each of our families um, is gonna be challenged by making a holy moments chain. A chain we'll continue to add to as the week and the weeks go on. A chain we can put somewhere in the house to remind us that God is always present, always revealing himself, and his love to us, not only to us, but through us and in us. Now, in your packet that, that you got dropped at your doorstep, um, you got 10 strips of colored paper to begin your chain. Each time you become aware of a holy moment or a God sighting or a God moment, we're going to ask you to write that on one of these strips and then add it to a chain. We've all made paper chains before. Um, and that's what the tape is for that you needed to have tonight. A tape or stapler or some, something to fasten those, those together. Um, in no time, um, you'll have all your 10 strips used up and looking for more paper. Now, I know that sometimes when you start an activity like this, um, it, it's good to kind of do a few together. And so when, when our team got together to discuss that, we decided let's do three together um, that, that we can all share as part of our chain. And so the first one um, that, that we can all claim is we're here. We're here sharing generations. We're talking about faith, we're talking about God moments together. And so um, that's certainly a sign of God's presence with us. So you can write on one of your strips, just put G-O-F, okay? And then make your first link. Father Bob, did you have an idea for a, a chain link? Feed my starving children, Mike. Tell me about that. Okay. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, October uh, usually is our mobile pack for Feed My Starving Children. Many of you have been a part of that the last couple of years. Next week would have been the mobile pack, which we can't do because of the 
virus. Uh, at the same time, uh, Feed My Starving Children is packing meals mechanically, and the Green Bay Mobile Pack wants to raise money to support that. And our goal this year is to raise enough money for 500,000 meals. Last year, we made 780,000 meals at the Mobile Pack in Green Bay. So I think you received these uh, M&Ms, and these were going to be given out during Lent. But the virus came and that took care of that. But I, I've tested these out, they're still fresh. So you can have the M&Ms. And I invite you, if you can, to uh, either through that M&M tube to put coins or dollar bills in, or uh, again, on the website of St. Matthew's, you can go to Feed My Starving Children and donate through the website there that is listed there. But it's another way, if you wanna say, the goal, holy moments that we create for other people. And, uh, and that includes our local pantries as well. Uh, a lot of people going through difficult times through the pandemic. But again, our parish lost out on uh, giving charities due to our picnic being canceled and other things. So each month we've uh, designated a charity. Last month was St. Vincent de Paul. This month will be Feed My Starving Children. So any way you can help out uh, to feed hungry children locally or internationally with Feed My Starving Children, we certainly encourage you to do so. Watch for videos and things this coming week on Facebook, et cetera, uh, put out by the Green Bay Mobile Pack uh, Board. Thank you. So Thank you. This, this tube of M&Ms, providing it's okay with mom and dad, you can take that little plastic seal off and dump them out on the table in front of you and divide them up and eat them. How's I'm that glad, for? I'm glad I'm alone. Holy, how's that for a holy moment, Father Bob? <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, let me get mine open here. I'm alone too, so I got a whole tube I get to eat. Yeah, me too, boy. Holy cow, there's a lot of them in there. I'm glad I don't have to count them all. Yeah. But remember on your supply list, we put uh, to have some quarters ready. Those quarters fit right in there, right in the tube, and that's your little collection device. So you can put the, the quarters that you have right in there. And I think that your tube will hold like $10 worth of quarters, which is enough to feed, what do they say, a 40? 25 cents a meal? Yep, yep. So each quarter that you put in feeds one starving child a whole meal. So if there's 20, if there are 20 quarters in here, you'll feed 20 children for a day. Yep. Okay. So when you have that filled up, then like Father Bob said, we got a collection thing here at church. You can either drop it off or bring it with you and, and dump it in. Um, and if you need more tubes to, to collect with, um, just let us know and we'll see if we can get you one. I want to mention last year, Mike, you might correct me, but I thought we had enough coins for like $1,300 or something out of that. Yeah. Start. It was huge. I mean, that was how much money was raised just through coins. So it's amazing what all of us doing this together. So now you should have two links done because one can say you are feeding starving children. We won't even put the M&Ms on there. Okay. So we got two of our links done. How about a third one? Anybody got an idea for a third one? Kat, do you have an idea for the third one? I do. So I've got, uh, I've got one of two choices. One uh -oh. is everyone can do this one right now. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. There we go. To the person next to you and give them a hug. Uh-oh. Air hug, uh -oh. Father Mike. There you go. There you go. So it was either that one um, or I, I did think of another one as we're, uh, as we close in prayer tonight. So it won't be quite now. It'll be in a couple minutes. It's just um, praying for all the, the teachers and students out there. So, so many of the students, you've been doing the online thing for a month now, um, for better or worse. And then there's so many schools now that started the year in person and now have had to go online. 
And so that's, it's tough for the teachers, tough for the students, tough for the parents. So just a little prayer for, but especially the students and the teachers who are having to just kind of rethink things for the next couple weeks or months. All right, thank you. So that should be your third one. So now you're caught up with me, okay? So now your job as a family is to come up with some other ideas that you can do um, or experiences that you can be part of that are holy moments, okay? And what I'd like you to do is just focus on one or two that you can do yet tonight or tomorrow, okay? What are, what's, what's a holy moment that, that you can create a link for that you can do today or tomorrow and add that to your chain? Okay, so you got a couple minutes to work by yourselves. See if you can come up with one or two for right now that you can add to your chain. Good to see everybody. Take care. Thanks for coming in, Father Bob. Bye. Okay, everybody get your uh, at least one. All right. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to put you in a brand new breakout room. You're going to have five minutes to share your link or your link ideas with the other people in your breakout room. Now, this will be a different breakout room than you were in before. Okay. So you'll have to introduce yourself real quickly again. And then each, there should be like five of you in each, uh, in each group um, and share what you're going to be doing for your next link. Understood? All right, here we go. You got five minutes. Okay, you can focus. I'm mute. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. You guys having fun tonight? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. So we all did the three together, which is awesome. 
Um, the one that we thought of the extra one was um, rainbows. Seeing, we've seen rainbows lately. And then um, if we see another one, maybe um, thinking of it as a God sighting. We love rainbows. Mm -hmm. What else do you guys have? I'm Mark, this is Eva, and Max is in the background here. Um, we've got a few different things that we've done over the past year. Um, but Max will be helping a, a friend of his with his car tomorrow. Yeah. For free. I'm Anna. I'm Alexa. I'm Adam. And we did quarantine because we our whole family got close. All right, I'm Natalie. This is Cecilia and Raphael, and we added family time. We added family time because it's sometimes not always there. So when we do get a chance, it's good to have it. Well, I'd like to follow that. We, um, this is London. She's in kindergarten, and we have Kennedy, and she also put family time. It was also um, pretty flattering for London to say dad time, so that's what she likes. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey! Now we really want to see how much more we can, can add to this, like how long we can make our chains. We kind of need to see. As long as the whole house. Not as long as the whole house. Well, the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like how there was some family time ideas and um, even Mark, like you were saying with Max helping someone fix, fix a car without um, any, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's awesome that he can share his talents like that. That's really cool. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully he can figure out the problem. <laughs> <laughs> He'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case well, scenario, he comes and gets me out of the office. <laughs> there you go. Family. Yep. Uh oh, are the rat trees frozen? Uh oh. That's okay. I'm sure they'll come back. Yeah, frozen. That's okay. <laughs> and that's pretty typical, I think. Oh, and they're gone. That's okay. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking everyone knows us. I don't know. Meg, Justin, um, Grace, and Pip. Hi. So, yeah. We're, um, I work with Mike. So pretty sure you guys have seen me. But Ebert family, you're new, so that's exciting. We are... Yeah. We were here last week, um, but Kara is not here today. So she left her friends. <laughs> she, oh, well, hey, that's fun. I had a pre-scheduled event and um, couldn't make it. Well, that's great. You guys are here. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Awesome. I love the background. That is so cool. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Dean <clears throat> is a God moment. Hugs were a good idea. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're rushing us, Mike. You're rushing I'm just us. Trying to, I'm just trying to get you out at a decent time. 
Well, forgive on one of our chains. <laughs> All we need is two Ann Washingtons oh. in a room, and we'll never do it in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. That's what we love about you. One of the many things. Yeah. So, um, sure. Sure. we had you uh, share some ideas. I threw <laughs> Father Bob the same challenge earlier. Oh and he went to town. So he came up with a whole bunch of God moments. Um, that, the holy moments. <laughs> That, that he could uh, that more than we did. <laughs> so if your um, if your microphones are still <laughs> unmuted could you mute them <laughs> so um, father Bob came up with a bunch and just like we uh, challenged you last time to take a picture of your forgive sign and send it in we're gonna challenge you to uh, Take a picture of yourself and uh, and your family with your chain. Once you add some some more uh, links to it, um, so that was Father Bob's effort. And um, Pope Francis stopped by again. Uh, he wanted to remind us that uh, just because it's been two weeks, the forgive sign doesn't go away. Um, forgiveness is still a big lesson that that we. Uh, need to continue working on. But he was kind of proud of himself with uh, all the links that he came up with. Um, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't read what he had written on there because he wrote it all in Italian. So, um, but he, he came up with quite a few in a, in a hurry. So when you uh, add to your chain in the next couple of days, um, take a picture of your family and text or email it to me. Um, you should have my uh, email and my, my phone number. So uh, thanks for participating that way. Um, if you want to grab your bringing home the word for September 27th, or sep yes, yeah, September 27th, um, it was in your um, generations binder that you got the first night, or you can just read the prayer off the the screen that we're going to be praying. And so um, together, let us pray. Lord, I am grateful for your example of humble service toward others. Help me to be a humble and loving person toward all people. Amen. So with that, I'm going to invite um, the leaders um, of our different uh, breakout groups, our different breakout uh, age levels, um, to talk a little bit about uh, any additional activities that they might recommend for the kids in their age groups. So, Terry, do you want to go first? Sure. In your packets, if you were in preschool or kindergarten, you should have received a little set of packets with the title Scenes on it. That's for preschool and kindergartners. And inside of that, they have activities like um, coloring, looking at some pictures that will generate discussion, and showing the children how to make the sign of the cross. And um, there's also a booklet with a dove on it that goes with the, like the weekly readers is what they're like, little pamphlets. But it's called Seeds also, and it has a dove on the front of it. And they go back and forth together. These tie into our, um, our weekly lessons, and you can use them at home as you wish. This is not homework. It's because it's preschool and kindergarten. There's very little reading and writing involved. It's uh, a lot of looking at pictures and coloring, but helping you to talk with your child about what we're discussing. Thank you. Where's Patty? Yeah. <laughs> hey everybody, so I'm now talking to first to third graders. We got uh, our weeklies are called Good News and they're green and they have tons of super awesome activities to do. You got to a uh, page like that in your baggies that has um, that on one side and that on the other side. 
<laughs> and that's fun for first to third graders too, or bigger or littler, it doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing I wanted to uh, invite everybody to do is, as we learn things every week, for example, uh, last time we learned about forgiveness, and this time we're learning about sharing uh, important holy moments with uh, everybody. Even though we are not able to be with people right now, you can have holy moments with your online friends while you're at school and helping your family when you're at home and all those things are important to do. So keep at it and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Jamie and Sue, did you wanna say anything now? Sure, we can say just a little bit now, although we're going to see hopefully our fourth and fifth graders um, a little bit later on after the session. But um, Shortly. so, yeah, so we have the venture and we have copies of that. I read through it and there's some good stories in there that I think um, help us think a little bit about our faith. So I'd recommend um, reading that if you have a little bit of time. On the front is a Bible challenge. And um, if we were in class with our students, we'd be opening up the actual Bible just because it's so important for us as Catholics to, um, to be familiar with that. And um, so, so today is um, St. Jerome's feast day. St. Jerome, many hundreds of years ago, um, translated the Bible. And so I think it'd be very appropriate um, to honor him by um, looking up last um, Sunday's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, who is also a special patron for us at St. Matthew's Parish. So you see all these connections here, it's all coming together. Think of how wonderful that would be. So just a little, um, little challenge for you. All right, as Jamie said, um, we are gonna be asking the fourth and fifth grade families to stay um, at, the, at the end for just a short time. Um, and, and um, they'll have some things for, for you to do um, more specifically. Miss Kat, where are you? Hello. So Hello. Um, we do have a vision, our, our book's a little more, uh, it's a little bigger, um, but for the middle schoolers, there's some interesting readings. There's a, a crossword puzzle that was a hit with the middle schooler in this family. And then um, for, for those that weren't able to join us uh, last week for Zesties, we did two activities. Um, one of them was, we, we, we were talking about forgiveness. We tried to forgive COVID. So bear with me. And any family, you're welcome to do this. What we did is we jotted down all the things that we were mad or sad about because of COVID. So learning online and not being able to see our friends and not taking a trip. And we jotted them all down and we crinkled them all up and we said, I forgive you. And, uh, and then we actually tried to throw them into a basket seven or 77 or however many times it took um, to remind us that sometimes forgiveness isn't easy. Um, so that's one activity that uh, anyone could do. And then the other thing was a little bit of a positivity mask. So we took our rather boring blue masks and wrote uh, something positive on it or drew a picture on it. Um, so just as another sign of, of just trying to, you know, I don't know if it would be a holy moment per se, but just trying to have some positivity and, and perhaps even share our faith uh, with our masks. So those are a couple of other ideas. Um, our next in-person will be in October. I'll remind you it's the, the 21st, so it's, it's about a month away. Um, and we'll be trying that, uh, our little tailgate, but it'll probably be colder then, so we might tailgate in the gathering space. Um, but just to keep that in mind that once a month, we are gonna try to, to meet in person just to break it up a little bit. Thank you. So again, our focus is to try and get more acquainted with scripture um, and to integrate scripture into our lives on a, on a deeper level. And we are using the Sunday readings throughout the year to do that. Um, so each time we gather, we'll focus on a, one of those Sunday readings and talk about how what, what's the big lesson that we can pull from it and apply it to our lives? Now, high schoolers, you don't have a leaflet, a uh, fancy leaflet like the, the youngers do, um, but yours is actually the bringing home the word, okay? So it, it's in the bulletin each week. It's online each week. Um, it's a, it's a two-pager, but again, um, there's some, some reflections, some ideas for 
activities and some things to think about. And of course, the prayer that, that we always use in Mass. So it's another good way to just kind of reconnect with, with those readings and to, um, to integrate them into our lives. Um, Deacon Bob couldn't be here tonight. There was something that came up at work at Paul's Pantry that he had to uh, be part of. So um, he will be in touch, though, with the, our high school students because we do have um, an in-person event planned for next week, Wednesday. Um, at least at this point, it's an in-person event. Um, but uh, we'll be getting out an email on, on that for you. A couple of announcements as, as we kind of prepare to close down. Um, again, the, the theme tonight, watch for God, okay? Be on the lookout. Name those holy moments, whether we, we are actively engaged in them or if it's just a revelation that, that, that we have, an awareness. Name it because it's important for us to realize that we don't walk alone. God is walking with us. God is present to us all the time. When, when we talk about, you know, in a couple months, we'll be celebrating Christmas. One of the names we use for Jesus at that time is Emmanuel. God is with us, is the translation. So how is God with us? That's how we're, what we're trying to get at with our holy moments. How is God with us? Okay, because God has promised that God will walk with us. Where are we seeing him? Um, it takes work to, to kind of name those and to become aware of those. Um, don't forget what Father Bob said about the collection for uh, Feed My Starving Children. That's an important uh, activity for our parish and definitely a holy moment. Those of you that were part of our mobile pack last year or the year before know that that night is a holy moment when we feed, when we pack enough food to feed thousands and thousands and thousands of children. Um, just uh, in, a, in a couple hours time. So um, that, that's really important to, to contribute to that if you possibly can. Um, thanks for being part of things. Watch your email. Um, our next session is October 14th. And don't forget to take a picture and send it to me. Okay. At this point, we're going to invite the fourth and fifth graders to stay on. The rest of you are free to uh, say goodbye and we will see you in uh, two weeks here, but uh, don't be strangers. If you need something, reach out via email or text. Bye. 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 All right. I think that's... So it's good to see some familiar faces and maybe some new faces too. Um, what we wanted to do was um, nothing that's gonna be super prolonged or anything like that, but just hopefully a little bit of getting to know each other. So um, let's see, who, who do we have with us? Do we wanna just introduce, have, have kids introduce themselves, say their names? How about Cecilia, you can start first. My name is Cecilia and I'm fourth grade. Welcome. And then maybe Carmen? Can she answer? Hi. So, um, I'm Carmen. I'm Carmen and I'm in fourth grade. Thanks, Carmen. Fantastic. Okay, Lizzie, are you a fourth grader too? Yes. All right. Welcome. Good to see you. And then the other students I recognize because we know each other from last year and it's super, super cool to see you all. How about Dakota? Hi, my name's Dakota and mine. I am in fifth grade. Fantastic, Claire? My name is Claire, I'm in fifth grade. And Seed Lally. My name is Seed Lally and I'm in fifth grade too. All right. Well, we're super, super excited to have you all here. We thought it might be fun to do something a little different. So Mr. Whalen will explain the activity. It's going to be brief. 
just a way to get to know each other a little bit. So imagine that it's next June and it's the last day of school. And imagine that you were actually in school and not just doing it by Zoom or something like that. And you get some good news on the last day of school. You learn that you have an opportunity to go to this amazing camp in the north woods of Wisconsin for a couple of months during the summer. It's got horseback riding and archery and bonfires and s'mores and a beautiful lake and canoes and kayaks and all sorts of good stuff. But you have to leave the next day and you can't take any electronics along. You can't have a phone, you can't have your gaming platform or anything like that. All you can have is your clothes and one special thing that means a lot to you that maybe reminds you of your family or just is, is really part, it really says a lot about who you are. What is that one special thing? So right now you have 60 seconds. It's in your house. Go in your house. I'll start counting. Find that one thing, bring it back, and then we're gonna take turns we're gonna telling take each turns other about talking it. about it. And go. <laughs> Hi, Sada. <laughs> Is this where we talked about them? <laughs> you said it <laughs> not. <laughs> it wasn't an excuse to get rid of the kids or anything like that. And, you yeah, guys, well, you've got great kids. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoy it. Blair's already ready. All right. Okay, wow. All right. And thing I would say, too good to be true. Not trust. <laughs> Dakota's back, Lally's back, Claire's back. Wow, people really move fast. Yeah. I should go grab, did you want to? You can just do yours. Who are we missing? Sada? Lizzie. Was Lizzie need, able to choose yet? She needs Carmen too. Yeah, Lizzie's back, we just need Carmen. All right. Carmen had to run in the basement. She'll be right back. Dakota, are you in classes in person? If I remember, you were doing Luxembourg Casco, right? Yeah. Are you in person? Uh, yeah, we're still in virtual, but we had a um, oh, it's virtual. We, had a, we had a choice of virtual, in school, or hybrid. Okay. And I know Cecilia, you're doing in person, right? Yeah. Which that did change. So starting Monday, we're virtual for the next, till the 26th of October. Oh, so today is like, her last day of in school, which she's not very happy about. She's yeah. Sick. But I said it's only hopefully for a couple weeks. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you got to be safe. So that's important. Yes. Oh, and Carmen's back. Yay. Okay. So I brought this big huge mat it's my yoga mat and what i do with that beyond doing yoga i do um centering prayer it's a it's a way of meditation of contemplation and so each morning after i do my yoga i feel like i can kind of sit quietly and just sit in the presence of god so for me my my holy moment often happens just sitting quietly there so that's what i would take because i really need that now yours does not have to be holy you guys so <laughs> Um, yeah. All right, who should we do first, Mr. Whalen? Uh, Lizzie has her hand raised. Oh, so did Claire. I'm sorry. Well, let's just go with Lizzie. Go ahead. Tell us about what you've got. Okay. This is a stuffed animal that looks a lot like my cat, Lucky. Oh, of course. So, what would remind you of your pet while you were gone? Uh huh. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Lucky looks real sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, then how let's move to Claire and then see Lali. I would bring my wand. It doesn't actually work. My aunt made it for me for my birthday. You think it's Harry Potter? That looks like Harry Potter. I was thinking the same thing. Very cool. <laughs> um, Did you say that just Harry reminds me you? of home and also a book series I love and adore. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and it's extra special because it's homemade. That's a great choice. All right, see Lali next. 
And then we'll do Carmen. Oh, yeah. Tell us about this instrument. Mm -hmm. So I just started I just started band so I'm like, and I especially because I get to have Quality time with my dad for like teaching me on the violin. Wow, oh, that's awesome. So music is something you can always take with you. So that's a really cool idea. And reminding you of your dad, I like that. Very good, very clever. Thank you. Carmen. Um, what I would bring was it's my unicorn stuffed animal uh, because um, and my granny gave it to me, and it's soft as my dog, Sam, my cat, and it's nice like my grandma and papa and my mom. Yeah, it makes you think of, of all the people who love you and that you love, just like Lizzie. I like it. Great choice. Good choice. All right, so Dakota or Cecilia, neither of you raised your hand. Who wants to go next? Um, I'll go next. So right. these are pictures of my dog. Oh, so I bring these with to remind me of him. Our pets are super important, you bet. Very cool. What's your dog's name? Sarge. Sarge, Sarge of course, because your dad's in the military. I love it. <laughs> okay, and let's go with Cecilia. I picked my American Girl doll Molly because I got her for Christmas. Oh, do you know I used to work for that company, so that's awesome. They're, they yeah, always put a clue to book. It was an awesome, yeah, company to work for. She loves them. She does, she dresses them and does their hair. She's got about, what, three or four of them? Five. Oh, we have five. <laughs> you have the glasses that go on her too, yeah? And she actually has my original that I got when I was young. Her, I had Samantha, and I passed oh, it. Of course, with the beautiful bow from the Victorian. Yeah. Pack, yeah. So she loves all the stories, and she's into them a lot. So that's good. Oh, that's awesome. And that's a good connection with mom, too. That it is. Why you would choose that, yeah. Wonderful. Claire, did you want to add something? I just have something else to add. Okay. Are we, if we, if this thing is actually true, will we be allowed to bring our own bedding? <laughs> yes. You'd have, I think you'd they have, would let you. <laughs> you'd have to bring a sleeping bag and a pillow, and you'd probably want to bring that. You would think of that. You're our, you're our little brainiac. <laughs> Not just clothes. It's wise. It's true. Yeah, if we were, were gathering together, each time that we uh, do our grouping, we like to have a quilt that we create, and it, it gives the uniqueness of each of us. And, and we, we were trying to think of a way that we could express ourselves, and we thought this might be a fun way to kind of get to know each other a little bit. And we'll, we miss being able to be with you in person, but this, this allows us a different way to get to know each other. So uh, with that, I don't think we want to make you stay that yeah. too much longer. Yeah. We just wanted yeah. to have some fun where we could get to know you and you could get to know us a little bit better. We're just delighted to be able to spend this time with you and hope that you'll keep coming back and and we'll, and we, we'll do the same. Maybe we can just close with a little quick prayer before we let you go. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, Son and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. amen. Loving God, we thank you for this time together today with our large group. Um, and with our class this, this year, we're blessed by each of these children and blessed also by their parents who love them and sacrifice them. For them. For them. <laughs> so bless us as, as catechists and be with us in a special way. Send your Holy Spirit to guide this group um, and these children as they go through school, whether in person or virtual. Keep them safe and keep all of us safe. And until we meet again, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Father, Father Son, Son Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit amen. amen. Be safe, be well, know that you're loved. Bye. Bye. Bye.